In the mid-19th century, the world stood on the brink of a communication revolution. Imagine a time when sending a message across the Atlantic Ocean took weeks, sometimes months. Now, picture a world where that same message could be transmitted in mere minutes. This is the story of how a single cable beneath the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean changed everything. The story begins in 1854 with an American entrepreneur named Cyrus West Field. At just 33 years old, Field had already retired from the paper manufacturing business with a fortune of $250,000, an enormous sum at the time. But Field wasn't content with early retirement. He had a vision, one that would push the boundaries of technology and human ambition. Field's dream? to lay a telegraph cable across the Atlantic Ocean, connecting North America and Europe in a way never before possible. It was an audacious plan, one that many dismissed as impossible. After all, the shortest route across the Atlantic spanned over 2,000 nautical miles of treacherous, unpredictable waters. But Field was not alone in his vision. He assembled a team of visionaries and experts, including the brilliant British scientist William Thomson, later known as Lord Kelvin. Thomson's contributions would prove crucial as he developed a device called the Mirror Galvanometer, an instrument sensitive enough to detect the faint electrical signals that would travel through the underwater cable. With a team in place and investors secured, including both the US and British governments, Field's Atlantic Telegraph Company set an ambitious goal to lay the cable by the end of 1857. Little did they know the challenges that lay ahead. The first attempt was nothing short of a disaster. The cable, loaded onto two ships, the Agamemnon and USS Niagara, broke within a day of leaving Ireland. It was a setback that would have deterred many, but not Field and his team. Undaunted, they regrouped and tried again in 1858. This time, the ships met in the middle of the Atlantic, joined their cables, and set off in opposite directions. The world held its breath as Agamemnon successfully reached Ireland on August 5th, followed by USS Niagara arriving in Newfoundland later that same day. For a moment, it seemed like Field's dream had become a reality. The first test signals were sent successfully, and the world erupted in celebration. Newspapers excitedly proclaimed, the old and new worlds are brought into instantaneous communication. It was a technological marvel that captured the imagination of people on both sides of the Atlantic. But the jubilation was short-lived. The cable's chief electrician, Wildman Whitehouse, in an attempt to improve the signal, increased the voltage. This fatal decision led to the cable's insulation failing, and within weeks, it ceased to transmit altogether. The dream of instant transatlantic communication had slipped away almost as quickly as it had arrived. Lesser men might have given up, but not Cyrus Field. He saw this not as a failure, but as a challenge to overcome. In 1864, he formed a new company and set about raising funds for an improved cable. This time, they would use the largest ship afloat, the Great Eastern, designed by the legendary engineer Isambard Kingdom Brunel. By May 1865, 2,600 miles of new improved cable was ready. The Great Eastern set sail from Ireland, carrying the full length of cable, a feat no other ship could have accomplished. But fate had other plans. More than halfway across the Atlantic, disaster struck again. The cable snapped and was lost to the ocean floor. It seemed like the Atlantic was determined to keep its vast expanse a barrier to instant communication. But Field and his team were equally determined to succeed. They returned the following year, in July 1866, for what would be their final attempt. This time, everything changed. On July 27, 1866, the Great Eastern successfully reached Hearts Content, Newfoundland. The cable was intact, the signal was strong, and at last, the dream of instantaneous transatlantic communication became a reality. But the story doesn't end there. In a display of incredible perseverance, the team aboard the Great Eastern set out once more. 
Their mission? To find the lost cable from the previous year. Against all odds, after weeks of searching, they managed to hook the end of the broken cable and bring it aboard. On September 2nd, 1866, they successfully connected this recovered cable, providing a second line of communication across the Atlantic. The impact of this achievement cannot be overstated. Suddenly, messages that once took weeks to cross the ocean could be transmitted in minutes. The first official telegram sent across the new cable was from Queen Victoria to President James Buchanan, a message of congratulations that took a staggering 16 hours to transmit. But this was just the beginning. As technology improved, so did the speed and capacity of the cable. By 1866, messages could cross the Atlantic in a matter of seconds. However, new challenges emerged. The cable could only transmit one message at a time, a limitation that would persist until the invention of the duplex in 1872, allowing simultaneous two-way communication. The cost of sending messages was initially prohibitive. In 1866, sending a message cost $10 per word, with a 10-word minimum. To put this in perspective, a skilled worker of the time would need to set aside 10 weeks' salary to send a single message. This effectively limited the use of the cable to governments and large businesses. But as more cables were laid and competition increased, prices began to fall. By 1869, a French company had laid another cable, and by 1900, 15 cables would span the Atlantic. The age of global instant communication had truly begun. The transatlantic cable changed more than just how we communicated, it changed how we perceived the world. Suddenly, Europe and North America seemed closer than ever before. News, stock prices, and personal messages could be exchanged almost instantly, fundamentally altering the pace of business, diplomacy, and personal relationships. The cable's impact extended far beyond its immediate use. It paved the way for future undersea communication systems, including the fiber optic cables that form the backbone of our modern internet. Today, over 95% of intercontinental internet traffic travels through undersea cables, the direct descendants of Field's pioneering project. But with this new connectivity came new vulnerabilities. As early as 1912, military planners recognized the strategic importance of these cables. During World War I, one of Britain's first actions was to cut Germany's international cables, effectively isolating it from global communications. Today, the security of undersea cables remains a critical concern. These cables, carrying trillions of dollars in daily financial transactions and vast amounts of data, are both a vital resource and a potential target. As we reflect on the story of the first transatlantic cable, we're reminded of the power of human perseverance and ingenuity. Cyrus Field and his team face seemingly insurmountable challenges, from technological limitations to the raw power of the Atlantic Ocean. Yet they persisted, driven by a vision of a more connected world. Their achievement laid the foundation for the global communication network we rely on today. Every time we send an email across the ocean, make an international call, or stream content from another continent, we're benefiting from the legacy of that first fragile cable stretched across the Atlantic seabed. The transatlantic cable truly was the cable that changed the world. It shrank our planet, accelerated the pace of human interaction, and opened up possibilities that were once unimaginable. As we face the challenges and opportunities of our increasingly connected world, we would do well to remember the lesson of Cyrus Field and the first transatlantic cable. With vision, perseverance, and ingenuity, we can overcome even the most daunting obstacles and change the world in the process.